Hey there, folks. Today, we're diving into a fascinating piece of history that will leave you in awe. We're talking about man-lifting kites, the incredible contraptions that allowed humans to soar through the skies before airplanes even existed. And not just for fun, mind you. These kites were instrumental in aerial reconnaissance during the early 1900s. Imagine a time when the dream of flying was still just a fantasy. Manlifting kites were the closest people could get to that exhilarating sensation. Originally used for pleasure and entertainment, these kites soon found their way onto the battlefield, becoming an indispensable tool for reconnaissance. But let's rewind a bit. The story of manlifting kites goes back centuries. In ancient China, they were used for both civil and military purposes. In fact, they were sometimes even used as a form of punishment. The Book of Sui, dating back to 636 CE, tells tales of prisoners being ordered to fly using bamboo mats. Talk about a unique way to enforce the law. Fast forward to the 19th century, and we meet Captain BFS Baden-Powell, the mastermind behind the Leviter kite. This hexagonal-shaped wonder was designed for the army to lift men for aerial observation and carry heavy loads. Baden-Powell's kite lifted a man 50 feet off the ground in 1894, and by the end of that year, he was regularly reaching heights over 100 feet. Around the same time, Lawrence Hargrave, an inventive soul, created the box kite. But he didn't stop there. Hargrave strung four box kites together and lifted himself off the beach in New South Wales, Australia. Can you imagine the thrill of being suspended 16 feet above the ground? This was just the beginning of his kite adventures. And let's not forget about the brilliant Alexander Graham Bell. Yes, the same Bell who invented the telephone. He developed a tetrahedral kite made of sticks arranged in a honeycomb pattern. Bell and his team, the Aerial Experiment Association, revolutionized kite design, predicting the perfect balance between lift and weight. Their innovations paved the way for future advancements in aviation. But the man who truly stole the show was Samuel Franklin Cody. In 1901, Cody patented a kite that built upon Hargrave's double box design. He saw the potential for military observation and even crossed the English Channel in a boat drawn by one of his kites. The Admiralty and the War Office took notice, and Cody conducted trials that reached record heights. His war kites became an official tool for the Royal Engineers. As time went on, manlifting kites faced competition from powered flight, and their popularity waned. But their legacy lives on in the recreational world. Today, people still enjoy the thrill of being lifted by kites, participating in various sports and activities that trace their roots back to these early pioneers.